Hi, today I want to come back to you on the issue of a Ralph and Rosso um, bankruptcy and failure and whatever. I have something um, which I think is quite topical to talk about in relation to this uh, Ralph and Rosso fashion house, luxury house, allegedly. A few years ago, I had one of a pattern cutters, pattern makers, a French guy who actually left his very young family behind in Paris and moved to London to actually work for them as a pattern maker and pattern cutter. And uh, then he contacted me because he said he had been fired from Ralph and Russo on grounds which were completely incorrect and basically he had been left high and dry. They barely sp paid his last salary and uh, told him to fuck off really and to, to go back to Paris. Of course, they were not going to pay the Eurostar ticket or expenses. So it was just uh, pretty bad the way they had, uh, you know, disposed of him. And so that's why he reached out to uh, us at Krefovi, at our fashion law firm Krefovi, to uh, basically negotiate a deal, a settlement, hopefully, uh, with Ralph and Russo. So I started looking into, of course, this case when, when our uh, a client instructed us. And firstly, I could see that actually it was not an employee that Ralph and Russo had actually made him come over from Paris to London on the premises of a, um, a, sending him a, a, um, like an employment agreement in the long term. But for the short term, he would be just basically like temping, you know, like on a self-employed basis. Like, a, uh, yeah, so, so he basically was just like a, a contractor but he was not a, uh, an employee of Ralph and Russo and um, and this sort of contracting slash self-employment agreement was dreadful um, he in terms of well the amount of his salary first secondly none of his expenses were refunded I mean it was just like a one pager this sort of contractor um, uh, self-employed agreement and so I noticed that. Then I reached out to these people who were, were supposed to assume the HR functions at Ralph and Russo and said, look, uh, what, what, what happened here? We need to sort this out because otherwise my client will have no other option but to sue and to have the uh, contract re-qualified uh, as an um, employment agreement because at the end of the day, he was working probably around 60, 70 hours a week uh, and definitely was in a subordination position towards Ralph and Russo and therefore the contractual, you know, self-employment uh, alleged status was total bollocks, excuse my French, uh, because he was completely, uh, a, uh, you know, an employee in terms of being very, very much subordinated to, uh, to the, the management at Russell and Russo, who were ruthless, absolutely ruthless. Um, as I said, he was working day in, day out, nights, weekends, and then they fired him on the, saying that he was incompetent and that he had stolen some, some shit, so, excuse my French, but really some stupid thing, like some pattern, pattern uh, 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 designs and stuff like that. Well, the guy was completely honest. He was coming from the, uh, fashion, uh, very, a very well-regarded fashion house in Paris. I think it was um, Balenciaga or something like that. So uh, they were ruthless, the management, Ralph and these people, Ralph and Russo were ruthless. It was an extremely toxic environment, as he explained to me. And uh, so, as I said, I emailed this HR department at Ralph and Russo, had barely any reply whatsoever. They didn't have any HR manager uh, uh, that, that, uh, that could be they didn't have an HR manager. They just had someone who was like sort of secretary, um, but they didn't have a proper HR manager who knew the rules about, uh, you know, English law, employment, uh, uh, rules, etc. It was really appalling. I've never seen this before. Um, so basically, I turned back to my client. I said to him, I'm afraid if you want to get something from these people, since they are completely unresponsive and they seem to not understand what is at stake here um, in terms of, you know, the, the probability of them being sued and all this craziness being exposed to the markets and to the public uh, awareness. Um, I'm afraid at this stage, after two or three months of trying to engage into a uh, without prejudice settlement uh, process, 
uh, I'm afraid I have come to the conclusion it's not going to work out. It's impossible with these people from Ralph and Russo. So your option is to actually file a lawsuit with the employment tribunal uh, in, in England. My client refused to do that and to pursue this avenue for reasons which are his own. And, um, and that, that, that was that. The matter uh, finished and stopped at this juncture. But basically, what my take out from this story was that I knew, you know, I knew since probably 2014, 2016, when my client called me and we had this matter to, to deal with for him, I knew that Ralph and Russo were total um, bullies and uh, uh, for their staff, um, probably also they. Uh, their suppliers, so they were total bullies. They created an extremely to toxic environment in the company. They mismanaged funds, um, and they had no idea of you know the basic structures that uh, any business in England should have in terms of uh, you know uh, HR support, uh, uh, legal f functionality, probably also accounting. I mean, I knew it was a disaster, uh, uh, which uh, a disaster in the making, basically. And I'm actually surprised that they managed to, um, you know, keep up with appearances and uh, keep, keep, keep this craziness going up until 2021. I'm surprised that he only came out in 2021, probably because they were able to pump a lot of money in the business through private investors who stupidly invested in this shite off, shitey, shitey business. So, yeah, I really hope they actually, you know, um, get some criminal sanctions against them this uh, Ralph and Russo people, because it was so plain, so much in view, that they were completely mismanaging this company and basically harming people around them and taking advantage and bullying them. I really do hope that they actually get criminally convicted because of a mismanagement um, of, the, uh, of the business and, um, and funds, etc. Of course, I really do hope that their uh, assets will be sized personal assets will be sized and that they will also become personally bankrupt because this is what they deserve and um, yeah and um, another thing as well I think it's very much of a shame that uh, you know PR the press public relations journ journalists and uh, celebrities um, basically ignore all these very important points of having a proper structure paying your, uh, your employees, treating them right, um, you know, um, uh, having some proper accounting, some proper HR, proper legal functions. So they just don't care about this, all these uh, harponates who are wearing the, 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 the clothes and dresses, etc. And so, yeah, Rafa Russo had some, pr some great PR, they had, they had some great, you know, press clippings and uh, a lot of celebrities who were working, who were wearing their dresses, probably didn't even pay for it. So nobody was coming back into the business. It was just publicity. But basically, it was just, uh, 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 you know, everything, it was completely on the basis of nothing. Everything was fake. And as I said, I'm surprised it, it took such a long time for these people to be found out. And now they're going to pay a dear price for their year. And uh, lack of accountability and responsibility with, for the dreadful actions that they've taken against people among them. Bye!